The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 29th, the Ryder Cup Friday edition of today's Trader's Ed Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, well, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is gonna toss at us. Now, today you and I, we're gonna go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, but even more important than that, and that's this, during this next 53 minutes, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone. You can dial on it at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't call in, but you've got a question, we've got you covered there. Go ahead and send me an email, send it off early, and send it to steve at tfn.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside that tiger's den, well, any ping will do. So go ahead and send me a private or a public uh, text message and uh, we'll go ahead and get to that request so let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous friday of course this is tiger financial news network i'm steve rhodes welcome to the show right now you get all the us indices trading to the upside dow just slightly it's up four points s and p's up 18 nasdaq 100 132 russell's up two semis up 42 trendy's up 87 new york stock exchange is up seven you've got gold trading off four bucks trading out at 1874 silver's up 11 pennies at 2284 lights recruit off a buck and change natural gas is down a penny in a 30-year treasury is up nearly one point trading out at 114.10 now leading the charge dollar wise the upside you've got structure Therapeutics up 37% or 13 bucks. Duolingo up 14 bucks or 10%. Super Microcomputer up 5%, 13 bucks. Asmill Holdings 13 bucks, a little over 2%. To the downside, it's Vail Resorts. It was just out there, down 15 bucks, a 66% move to the downside. Badger is down about 12 bucks or 7%. The OIH is off 3% or 10 bucks. Core Sep Therapeutics is off 20%. That's a six dollar and change move. And John Deere down six bucks as well. That's one and six tenths percent to the downside. So the major question out here that everybody's asking, I believe, is this a significant bottom? Is this a bottom that's gonna last? Where are we at out here? So let's go try to answer that question now. Test to begin answering that question. I believe the first thing that we want to do is we want to come back and take a look at correlations out here right now, specifically the correlation between the US dollar index. That is the bottom panel, or the center panel, and the ES Mini. That is the upper panel out here. And what you can see, actually, on that ES Mini, let me just, just to make sure, let me just change this to my synthetic contract. Just want to make sure we are getting all the accurate data. And we're looking at the correlation here. It's measuring right now. Yeah, perfect. So we're taking a look at the correlation. Directional correlation is what this chart is uh, calculating for us. So let's just move this over here. Now, when bar this is over just simply a one-week period. So this is a five-day correlation out here. So it's giving us the average over a five-day period of time. And when bars are down below the zero level, which most of these are, and just as a rough guess, looks like about 90% or so of the bars. So we can say there's a 90% correlation that goes on between the U.S. dollar index and the ES mini. So in order for the markets to really rally, what we need to see the ES, uh, what we need to see the U.S. dollar index do is continue to move lower. Well, so we're going to take a look at that U.S. dollar index. We're going to take a look at what needs to happen. So this is the first basis of what we want to take a look at. What's the second basis? The second basis, we're going to go ahead and change screens. Uh, first, let me get this uh, set up here. Just give me a moment. And we're going to take a look at daily, weekly equity futures. Yeah, let's, let's start there. So give me a moment, we'll change screens. You'll see the white background screen up here momentarily. And you're gonna see both daily and weekly time frame charts. The upper row 
uh, of the uh, charts out here are the daily time frame. So you can see the ES, the NQ, the YM, and the Russell 2000. Each of those have TD9 count bottom patterns out here. Now, as we mentioned earlier, uh, that the ES mini is sitting right at a level, its first level of resistance. And that first level is at 4370. The actual high for the day, just out of curiosity, is 4371 and a quarter. Now, even if price can close above 4370, it has another resistance area. And that other resistance area is that red oscillator and change line. And that's a real important one. Not until price closes above that can we suggest that maybe, maybe there's a bottom of some type of significance out here. And that level is at 4385 as we speak right now but right now you've got price sitting at a resistance area uh, which is the center of that profile if we take a look at the nq also doing the same now in the case of the nq it's got quite a wide ranging profile new profile that's formed out there it's bullish in structure but in order for price to be able to make that move to the 15509 level ordinarily we'd say you just simply need to close above the center of its profile and that may be the case but right now price is sitting at resistance that's at the 15020 just give you the exact number 15021 area. Now that's going to move up and down by a buck or two. But if price can overcome that level and we get the US dollar index to continue to move slower, then we'd say the NQ is likely going to go target the 15509 area, maybe even 15719. We take a look at the Dow. The Dow also forming a new profile. Now, it is slightly bullish in structure because the center is a little bit closer to the bottom than it is to the top. And the center of that profile is 34,006. That has so far acted as resistance. Much like the ES Mini, the next level of resistance above that would be that oscillator and change line. That is currently printed at 34,216 or thereabouts. So that's a level that price would need to close above. Now, the top of the Dow's equity future contracts profile, where all the sellers are hanging out, is up at the 34,467. Or we'll just simply call the tops of those boxes for the Dow and for the NQ. That's going to be the safety position. If we take a look at the Russell 2000, the Russell 2000, and we've got John C. in the Tigers Den who shorted the Russell this morning. And so far, that has worked out. Now, the problem here, what you want to watch inside the Russell 2000, it's one of the, it's the only equity future contract that potentially would take out the top of that daily profile. And that would be that would be a first level of concern, John. You've got a TD9 count bottom. And if price can close above the top of its profile, that's at 1811.30. You're trading right now at 18.13 and change out there. But if price closes above um, if price closes above 18.11.30, it just suggests extreme caution because what it's done is we'll have taken out the two resistance levels that should have or could have stopped price. So it's going to be an end of day decision for you, or at least with regard to that piece of information. Now, if price can clear that, it says that price wants to make a move to the 1892.70 level. Now, I don't think that the Russell 2000 is going to move on its own out here. So, um, but but still, you, you're, you've still got a an, an instrument that could be closing above the top of its daily profile, and that would be breaking through resistance. Now, granted, John, just depends on your level of of risk out there, you really do want to see two consecutive days, right? Two consecutive days above a resistance level to tell you that it's broken out. Now, quickly on the bottom chart, the weekly charts out here, you've got a weekly A to B equals CD to downside. It's made the one-to-one -one price projection, just needs a bullish reversal candle to confirm a Gartley buy pattern. The NQ still hasn't busted through the weekly swing point, so it does not have an A to B equals CD down pattern. The Dow does, the Russell does. The Russell 2000 could form a TD nine count bottom pattern between this week and the next two out there. Steve Rhodes with TFN, we get back to this break, let's go take a look at the currency pairs to try to put this whole puzzle together. Steve Rhodes with TFN, we'll be right back. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously 
When you sign up for the Tiger Forex Report, you also gain instant access to Teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted, Forex Strategies and Fundamentals, What is Behind the Tiger Forex Report. For all the details and to start your 30-day Tiger Forex Report subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Welcome back, folks. So we still got all the uh, U.S. indices that we track trading the upside inside the S&P 500 sectors. It's the healthcare and the energy sector that are trading down uh, just a, a bit out there. The XLE a little bit more than just a bit. So now what we're doing here is we're trying to just piece this puzzle together with regard to what's the market uh, communicating to us. So we're going to dive down into the intraday charts. And for that, I'm just going to use the 30 minute time frames. And on 30 minute time frame charts, you've got the equity futures on top. You've got the euro, the yen, the great British pound. They've got the spot volatility next, next to that. I can't put the US dollar index up here because I have to change the data feeds and we're not going to get into that right now. But this provides us with a ton of information. Now, we're also uh, helping John C., who shorted the Russell 2000 this morning, uh, out with, the, it, it, with his request to take a look at it. So the key level here that I would say you also want to see price close below today, which right now has been tested twice, is its TD9 count breakout level. This is on a 30-minute time frame chart. So in that 30-minute time frame chart, that 1809.90 level, you can see how that has acted as resistance. Now, twice, maybe the third time is a term. If price can close below that, that would add to your evidence to go ahead and stay short. Now, if it doesn't, it just uh, you're still trading below profile levels, but uh, just another piece of information for you to pay attention to. Now, there's no bottom pattern, but remember, pulling back to a level of support, a breakout level, really can be a bottom. Just like pulling up to a level of resistance, a breakdown level, can be the place but you would go ahead short so you don't necessarily that is the pattern just simply pulling back to those areas now let's go all the way over to the left take a look at the es mini what do we know about it rose mint indicator top with price consolidating with inside its profile the key level of support here is 43.54 on a 30 minute basis if price were to close below that 43.39 would be the very likely target if we take a look at the nq out here the nq also has a rose mint indicator top price just trading with inside its profile levels the key level if you're short or want to short you want to see price close below 14,962 if that were to occur odds favor a move down to 14,880 in a quarter out there resistance being 15,046 but really it's the high of the day which generated that roads momentum indicator top on a 30 minute time frame the Dow 
The Dow forms wave number seven top. Price pulls back to its breakout area. So far, it's held. It's tested it again. This is the third time, 33,928. If price closes below that, we're likely looking at an A to B equal C to downside. We're certainly looking at lower price out here. With regard to the Russell, we've already covered that. Now, let's take a look at the currency pairs. So what has to happen on an intraday basis with regard to the currency pairs? Well, the very first thing, you can see that on a 30-minute basis, we had a TD9 count top that formed inside the euro. And guess what? As we were coming on the air, you've got a TD9 count bottom. Now, that pattern completes at 1130. It's 1121 right now. But what you'd be watching for, let's assume that we don't get down to those lows. If the euro starts heading below that TD9 count bottom on a 30-minute basis, and that level is 1.05691, 1.0569 out there, that's going to suggest that the euro is going to go ahead and go move lower. Now, if the euro does that, that says the U.S. dollar index moves higher. The euro is a 57% weighting inside the indice. So watch that. Now, you know, you've got, you've got perfect data to help you navigate throughout the day. What should happen here? <coughs> what should happen? is that the euro should move higher. It should at least move higher into the bottom of its profile, that green oscillator and change line. That's at 1.0596. Now, if you really want to see the U.S. dollar index move lower, give you a signal that its intent is to move lower, you need to see the euro close above its TD9 count top on a 30-minute basis. That level is 1.0616 out there. Hopefully, you're writing those numbers down on your pad of paper because this will help you to navigate what the markets are communicating to you and I, the markets being what's going on inside the U.S. dollar, what's going on inside the equity markets with regard to your short-term patterns that are out here because right now that's what's important. We'll take a look at the larger term pattern here momentarily. The yen. The yen is moving in the wrong direction right now. So the yen doesn't have a, a top just yet. Uh, and the yen is about 13% of the U.S. dollar index. So you really need to see the yen move lower out there. And we don't have a pattern to suggest that that's what's going to unfold. The Great British Pound moved lower. I don't really have a top, although I can see small A to B equals CD pattern. So in essence, it does have a sell the D point top out there. And price is pulled back and has found support at its break level. That's at 1.219. What you don't want to see the pound doing is really close below that 1.219 for two consecutive sessions, unless it forms a TD9 count pattern. But that is I don't know whether that will happen or not. I wouldn't hold out my hope that that's a pattern that is in play out there. If the pound moves higher out here, then you're going to see the U.S. dollar index move lower. If the pound moves lower and it gets below that way, uh, uh, bar number six, we're likely going to see move down to 1.212. That will put strength inside the U.S. dollar index. So that's what's going on on a shorter term basis. Let's close that out. Let's go to a little bit longer term basis like the daily time frame. What's happening there? And this is going to be very important, too, to try to navigate. Is this any kind of significant bottom or not? Well, here are the three currency pairs that represent 83 percent of the U.S. dollar index. What we can see out here right now is that the euro is testing a key level of support and that is that red oscillator and change line if a day's end price closes below that 1.057 um not really a great sign for the euro and that would suggest that we might see the u.s dollar continue to zoom zoom higher out there the u.s dollar japanese yen again no top it needs a bearish reversal candle that's likely not going to happen today. Um, and so it looks like it wants to continue to move higher. It wants to it wants to move higher, weaken, and the U.S. dollar index will get stronger. And in the case of the Great British Pound, and this was the best hope because this one had the best pattern. And that pattern was a TD9 count pattern. And what has price done today? And if you take a look at Great British Pound, boy, how has that oscillator and change line worked? Only one day with one bar close above it since about the uh, September time frame. That's right, since the September time frame out there. So uh, this, what you really want to see here is you want to see the Great British Pound close above 1.22160 today to give us hopes that we see the U.S. dollar index move lower out there. So that's the overview. Those are the things to really watch to try to navigate what's going on inside the markets. Let's go out to our first caller. It is John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing very well. Thanks for taking the call. My pleasure, as always. And it's the NASDAQ 100 or the NQ uh, that you want to take a look at? Steve, uh, yeah, uh, yes. I've got a very specific question I am attempting to answer for myself. Sure. Uh, I, haven't, I haven't come to an answer, and I wanted to put the same question to you 
and see if there's anything that immediately pops to your mind that might be uh, helpful in answering the question. And, and Steve, okay. uh, and the subject is uh, not only the U.S. stock market, but its constituents. And, of course, you know I have worked for a couple of years with this idea that the S&P 500 is, in effect, half the NASDAQ 100 and half the NYSE top 100. Yes. Um, and um, uh, we know the NASDAQ 100 is up you know, over 30 percent year to date. The NASDAQ 100 is effectively unchanged year to date. So. Um, I am attempting to answer this question. The decline that occurred in the NDX, uh, the NDX topped July, uh, mid-July, I think uh, the 19th was the date, and uh, we've made a low, uh, lower low this week. Hey, and John, looking- John, real quickly, John, if you could just hold that, because I didn't realize we're going right to a break right now, but if you'd hold that thought, and then come back and let's uh, restart that up and we'll certainly do everything I can to answer your question. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV.
Welcome back, folks. Let's go out to our caller, John. John, sorry that I had to cut you off there, but uh, if you'd be kind enough to uh, uh, continue on with the uh, question that you have for the NASDAQ. Yeah, it's very good, Steve. Uh, thank you. Um, of course, we, uh, we do not know how important uh, or not the low this week is. Sure. But uh, I'm asking myself this question. If... If this low this week leads to a multi-week advance, and of course it may not, but if it does, uh, which, uh, which S&P subsector will lead? Will it be the NASDAQ 100 or the NYSE 100? Uh, that is the question I'm asking myself. Uh, I am just in the process of posting in the Tiger's Den a ratio chart of the uh, NDX 100 uh, divided by the NYSE 100. Um, uh, so we all can just look at it. But my question to you is, is there anything that you could share that might give clues to the question, uh, will the NDX outperform or underperform the NYSE 100 if we get a rally phase. Wow. So um, that's, 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 that's <laughs> I'm a, sorry to lay that on you. <laughs> I appreciate that on a Friday. Um, you know, that's <laughs> it's a, it's a great question, and and I don't I don't know the answer to that. Um, I mean, I'm going to take your chart that you've got in the den. I'll I'll look at some. You know, maybe look. I'll try to I'll try to come up with an answer for you on that uh, for Monday. Um, and just take a look at things. So I see you've got this ratio chart here that has, I mean, you've, you've studied this a little bit more. I'm going to just put this on the screen so that others can see this. So this is the ratio where you've taken the NYSE top 100 divided by the NDX or, or, or vice versa, correct? Correct. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll create a chart like this. All right. And I'll get all those data points and put it into the system so that we can pull up a chart and just see what kind of patterns are out there to see if there's anything that way um, that might help answer that question. That's nothing that I can do that quickly out here. I did put up the NYSE 100 uh, charts. That's what I've got up on my screen. I'm not really sure that I got an error message, but I, I believe that this is uh, accurate or fairly accurate. And this shows here, John, a TD9 count top a uh, wave seven top that formed out here on July 24th. Um, and, uh, the profile levels out here are, are irrelevant there. I just haven't changed over to a different chart out there. Um, I would say in taking a look at this chart here, what I could share with you on the NYSE 100 is resistance is at 13,805. Um, so that's a, a level that if price were able to close above, uh, um, you know, that would suggest a further move higher. But that's really not your question. Your question is, is the, is the, S and is the is the uh, New York 100 New York Stock Exchange US 100 will that outperform the uh, NDX 100? So I'll, I'll try to come up with an answer on that, but I uh, but but I, I I can't do that off the I can't do that off the top, man. I've not I've not looked at that, so I would be just guessing, and I really don't want to guess. I'd rather try to come up with something more substantive. Is, is that okay with you? Steve, I thank you for uh, entertaining an off the wall question. I fully understand, and if you don't have anything to contribute to uh, to that topic at any time in the future, don't worry about it whatsoever. Uh, uh, no problem, no problem. But I'll tell you, you know, you asked a question, and I should be able to pull that uh, together pretty quickly. So uh, I'll just take a copy of your chart, I'll uh, reproduce it, and then put it in to see what kind of signal information we have. You know, what I have up on my screen right now, just to kind of help folks out, this is the 95-year seasonal cycle for the S&P 500. And you can see that we're supposed to be bottoming right about now. And what this suggests, folks, is that we should expect a rally into the early part of next week now we're coming into end of month time frame so that would make sense now this chart here on average the day where we would get a top would be on october the 6th or 7th turns out that october the 6th or 7th is next friday next friday saturday out there so this is a rally that could extend itself uh, out there but from a seasonal standpoint this should not be the bottom the, from a fall stamp from the uh, fall standpoint we should just simply see a counter trend move and then a move lower down into the uh, October type time frame out there so John I believe you've probably hung up is that correct I think uh, the answer no, Steve, oh, uh, oh, I uh, wish you okay. a good weekend and thank you 
Uh, you're welcome. And thanks for the call. I appreciate that. And a little bit of homework that you gave me for over the weekend. That was John in uh, Philly. Um, and take us, let me see, what questions do we have out here? So I think I've answered all the questions there for John C. with regard to the Russell. Snowball wanted to take a look at light sweet crude. So let's get over to the crude oil charts out here. We'll take a look at daily, weekly, monthly. I think I've got those up in the longer term time frame. I do. So let me just change screens here to make sure we get over to the right spot. Give me a moment. Um, Change screens. Come on. This is really weird. Oh, okay. Applications. There we go. Okay. So now, uh, here's what we know right now, Snowball. First, lights we crew, and I'm going to put up the monthly chart. We'll go from left to right, upper left to uh, lower right out here. On a monthly time frame, what we can see is prices trade above the top of its bear structured profile. That's a very bullish outcome. However, there is this little dark cloud cover up here. Uh, this is for the uh, high from June of 2022. In order for Light Sweet Crude to give us the full breakout message, price needs to close above that high. That's 94.34 out there. Let me see here. Um, Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. So, so that's the first thing with regard to lights recruit. It's bullish, but there's a resistance level in essence that it's uh, tested and it's rejected so far. Does it mean that it, that's a, that it's a top or anything? Because the weekly chart shows us an A to B equals C to the upside that gets us into about the ninety-seven dollar area on a daily time frame. Um, I probably can find an A to B equals CD pattern. Let me pull this uh, out here. I can, but that hasn't completed. So what we have right now is you've got a resistance level, which was yesterday's high. That was that dark cloud cover. That's A resistance level. Price right now is trading back inside a profile. Lights recruit may pull back. Where it should find support is down at 88.87 out there. If price closes below that, then we're looking at something more. Of a, uh, something more of a, a potential top out there and a move back to 78.94. So that's the message from the daily time frame chart. So overall, I see a five hour, a four hour TD9 count top. That says price could pull back to 89.31 and find support. We've got a five hour TD9 count top. This is showing that we could see an A to B equals CD to the downside. 89.08 is the uh, support level. So I'd say we've got support here between 88.87, 89.08. 89.31. Those would be the levels to be watching. Uh, Snowball, I hope that that information uh, helped you out. Let's go to our next caller on the line. It is John in Chicago. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Hey. Yeah. Hi, Steve. Thank you for what you do. Um, my question my is pleasure. around gold futures. Um, yes. I, uh, I'm trying to develop a uh, correlation with either uh, the, the, do the dollar or the uh, – the uh, yields, but it seems like gold is just it just keeps dropping. Is there a way? Hello. Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm listening to you. Is there a way okay. to what? Yeah, where do you see gold holding support and reversing? Uh, it just seems to be dropping like a rock. Sure. Okay. So, um, great question. John, do me a favor, because we're going to go to a break here. Just hold on. We'll come back, and we'll answer your questions about gold. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back, folks. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're on the line with John in the Windy City of Chicago. We're trying to answer the question, where's gold headed to? What do we need to be watching for? So, and you mentioned correlation, John, and that's a, the place where I would like to start with you. And so what we're looking at here on this chart uh, is that the uh, center portion is the U.S. dollar index. The top portion is the gold contract. And we still have this set to a five-day correlation. So the very first thing you'll notice is that most of the bars, probably 95% of those bars over a five-day period are below zero. That tells us we have an um, inverse Steve, relationship. Sorry, yeah? I can see you, but I – okay, now I can see your chart. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Okay, perfect, perfect. So, so again, the top portion is gold, the center portion is U.S. dollar, and the bottom portion is the five-day correlation, directional correlation between the two. So with those bars predominantly being below zero, it tells us that we still have this very strong uh, inverse correlation going on. So in order for gold to really find some kind of significant bottom, we've got to find a decent top inside of the U.S. dollar index. That's the first thing I would say with regard to correlations. Does that make sense to you? Yes, sir. Now, here's the other piece of the pie of that puzzle. I've drawn in two green arrows out there. Coming off of the lows here since the dollar's been rallying since the July time frame, and this is a daily time frame, what we can see here is we've never seen price bust through. There's never been a change in trend signal for the daily time frame because price is pulled back, sure, but it's always found support at the bottom of those profiles. The last time that we were taking a look at that was back on August the 30th uh, and then on August the 31st. We have a new profile that is formed. And that new profile has support at 104.784. That's the first level that you want to have on your pad of paper. What I can share with you is that if the U.S. dollar index closes below that, then we likely have some type of significant bottom at this stage. If we don't, we're just getting some jostling back and forth with regard to Goldilocks. But I think that, you know, here, because of that directional correlation, that's the really important level to watch. I have no idea whether Dow will bust through 104.78 or not, but I do know the level to watch that if price does close below that, that would then suggest to you and I that we might have some kind of solid bottom inside of Goldilocks. Now, I'm going to switch over and take a look at the gold charts. So give me a moment right here. We'll change uh, uh, screens. We're going to take a look at the white background charts. In the white background chart, we're going to start with the daily time frame. And the daily time frame, price right now is trading with inside its profile. The support level here is between 1763 and 1848. 
The reason that I say it's between that, John, is because this is a bullish structured profile. I mean, the center of this profile is closer to the bottom than it is to the top. So there's more buyers lined up between 1766 and 1848. So that's going to be the first zone of potential support. You with me? Yep. Perfect. Now, we take a look at the weekly chart. The weekly chart shows that we have an A to B equals CD to the downside. That A to B equals CD to the downside gets us around the 1830 level. I'm not going to give you the exact price because I don't have my tool out there, but around that level. Well, 1830 takes us into that uh, buy zone level on the monthly time frame. Gold tends to do more than a one-to-one -one A to B equals CD. Does it do it always? No, but it tends to. The breakout level inside of Goldilocks is down at 1765.80. That gets us down to the very bottom of that weekly profile as well. So I would say odds favor a move to the 1765 to 1830-ish type area when we take a look at the when we combine the monthly and the weekly charts together. Now to the daily chart. And I believe uh, Coda or uh, Peak G had a, a question about gold and where we were at with regard to TD9 counts. No TD9 counts of significance on the monthly or the weekly. And we will form bar number seven today on the daily time frame. So Coda knows that on a TD9 count pattern, that the bottom can come in when the low is formed on either bar eight, nine, or the bar following nine. For example, gold here back on the trading day of uh, June 29th formed bar number eight of a TD9 count. That pattern confirmed the following day. And that led to a nice rally. Turns out that rally led to a TD nine count top. What happened then? We had a TD nine count bottom. That bottom here on August 14th, that just simply fell apart immediately. That was telling us about a strong momentum move to the downside. We got a nice little rally out there. We busted through another TD nine count uh, bottom out here. So it's really not looking great. I would say, based upon the TD nine count patterns here, from a shorter term or intraday type uh, t uh, move out here, John, we're looking at a short term bottom likely forming between uh, Monday and Wednesday of next week. Now, that short term bottom may just simply take price up to resistance levels. Right. And we'd have to come back when that bottom does form to take a look at what those levels might be. Maybe there's a new profile on the daily time frame or where the oscillator and change line is. But if you were asking me is gold bottom today, I don't see anything to suggest that that is the case out there. And instead, I think we're looking at lower price. We've got to watch on the daily base, the TD nine count patterns that are out there. When I look at the intraday charts right here, I don't show gold. I, I don't have any signal of gold forming any kind of intraday bottom just yet. Of course, we do know that the directional correlation between it and the U.S. dollar index is going to influence that. So we have to watch what the U.S. dollar index is doing, too. Does that help answer your question? Yes, Steve, it does. Thank you so much. Oh, great. Perfect. Well, I'll look forward to hearing from you again, I hope. All righty. Absolutely. Thank you for you what you do again. You Goodbye. bet. And you have you have a nice weekend. That was John in uh, Chicago. Let's go to our next question. And actually, so it's cut out uh, here from gold. And Pete G was asking about the uh, the uh, TD nine count signals, both in gold and silver. So we've covered that for gold. Let's go ahead and pull up the silver charts for Pete G. And when we take a look at these silver charts out here. Uh, and let's let's do the review of silver. You're back inside the profile level inside silver. Its next area of support is 2157 on a monthly time frame. On a weekly time frame, you're going to signal if price closes below. Yeah, your price closes below today, 2266, and you're at 2252, I believe, right now. Yeah, uh, that's going to trigger an A to B equal C D to the downside. So silver then could open up a move to 1916. Silver on a daily time frame, there's no TD9 count there to be aware of. There's also no TD9 count to be concerned with, uh, as, at least at current uh, currently, but there is a TD9 count that we want to watch. And that's the bottom that could be broken that would then confirm an A to B equals CD to downside as well. So there was a TD9 count bottom that formed inside silver on September 14th. That low specifically is 2255. We're trading below that low right now. If price closes below that low, that sets up an A to B equals CD to the downside pattern out here. So that's what I see when I take a look at silver. We're in bar number five right now. So no TD9 count there to help us identify some kind of uh, bottom or anything. The TD9 count that's of concern is the one that formed out here on September 14th. That could be taken out today. So I hope that that helps you out or answered your questions there, Peak. Also, intraday-wise, with regard to silver, I don't see any kind of bottom signals, if anything. TD9 count top that formed out here on the 30-minute basis, and price has broken through those breakout levels, you know, like a warm knife. 
in some beautiful butter out there. So TD9s, that's uh, what you've got out here for uh, Peak D. Let's uh, go take a look at Tesla. That's for Coda inside the Tiger's Den. We'll get over to those charts here momentarily. That's the Euro chart. We will come back to those perhaps at the end of the trading session. But first, let's go take a look and see what Tesla is doing. And this is for, as I said, this is for code inside the Tiger's Den. So Tesla today ran right into resistance. That is green oscillator and change line. If price can overcome that level, and I mean overcome by closing above it, 253 and change. Right now, it's 253 in the 60s out there. Then that would suggest a move up to 266.47. So you've got what, what, what you have, what's nice about Tesla right now is it's trading above support. But it's trading below resistance, so it's somewhat neutral. Support uh, above res well, it's trading above one resistance level. That's the top of its bear structured profile, and that's up at the 250 32 level. But you really need to see a close by that green oscillator and change line, both on the daily and the weekly, to suggest that Tesla wants to move higher. We'll finish looking at Tesla when we get back from the spring. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back 
that, folks. If we take a look at the consecutive days higher and, clo and lower inside of a Tesla, you can see today is going to be bar number two. This typically rallies for two to three sessions out there. Um, so it looks to me like right now price is struggling at those resistance level. I would change my mind and say get a third day's rally if price can close above 253.62. Maybe let's make it 253.70 out there. If you get a close above that odds favor, you have a, at least a third day of rally inside of Tesla. Uh, the next request was to take a look at the junior nugget. Not looking very good out here. This is for Joe. Joe, in the J nug out here, what I've got is an A to B equals CD to the downside. That A to B equals CD to the downside, it gives you a one-to-one -one price projection of 1830. Now, this is a larger pattern. I'll just simply go ahead and expand that chart out. So it's a larger pattern. Don't have any kind of a bottom signal. Price rejected its red oscillator and change line today. So it does look like this wants lower price on a weekly basis. The price target is 2289. So you've got 2289 on the weekly and 2179 on the uh, daily time frame. Hope that that helps you out. Joe wanted to take a look at the UNG. So to do that, we're really going to go take a look at what's going on. The underlying contract for the UNG is going to be the November contract. So give me a second to get there. Make sure that's what I'm showing. Um, here we go. And so here is, yeah, per, uh, perfect. So we got an A to B equals CD to downside inside of natural gas for the uh, uh, November contract. That price projection is 276. Today's action is not what you want to see at least as of 11.56 in the morning. Price was below a bullish structure daily profile where counter trend moves running resistance is at the center of that profile. And that's at 296, and that's what you have right now. So right now I'd say odds favor that natural gas is gonna complete that one-to-one -one A to B equals CD to the downside. So hope that helps you out, Joe. Folks, thanks so much for all the requests this week. Have a fantastic weekend. I'll look forward to seeing you on Monday. Be safe out there, take care.